Hey everybody, Thomas Joseph here with another kitchen conundrum. We've all had this problem. It's the time of year, it's autumn, and apples are abundant. If you've gone apple picking with your family, I'm sure you have an excessive amount and you need some clever ideas for all of those apples. So you've made your pie, you've made your turnovers, but did you know that you could make your own apple cider? Well, I'm gonna show you how, and it's super simple to make, and I'm sure you'll be doing this all the time. I just like to use one of these apple cores here. It makes really short work of cutting up all the apples and getting that core out. I'm using seven pounds of apples here, and that will yield about a quart and a half of apple cider. But you could use as many as you want. But you wanna make sure that your apples are well washed before you do this process, since you are keeping the skins of the apples on. And now, the second step, which is processing the apples into a puree, a chunky applesauce consistency. So a regular food processor, and you just want to fill the food processor up about halfway. Don't overload the machine, or else it will take forever. So top on, and you're going to process this until it forms a nice, chunky applesauce. Now, you might have to scrape down the sides a few times, but this really only takes about a minute, a minute and a half, until it achieves the right consistency. And this is good to go. Done. So I'm just going to pour this into a bowl and repeat the process until I'm finished with all of the apples. So the last batch is done, and you'll notice as you do this that the color will start to immediately change, and that's because the apples are oxidizing, and that gives you the beautiful color that we know apple cider to be. I'm gonna transfer this now to a colander that's been lined with cheesecloth, at least three layers of cheesecloth, and I have it on top of a nice tall vessel. You could use a pot here, whatever you have that will do the job, and then just pour your apple into the cheesecloth, and you can see the cider is already dripping through the cheesecloth. And what I like to do is take up the sides of the cheesecloth. This is why you need a bit of an overhang. Just give the bundle a little bit of a twist at the top. Take a heavy, heavy enamel cast iron pot, something heavy duty, and place it directly on top of the bundle. And let this sit in the refrigerator for about four hours or up to overnight is even better. And all of the cider is gonna drip through and you're gonna get a wonderful, flavorful cider. Okay, so this has been sitting overnight. I'm just gonna take this off. And here it is. Now, it's unpasteurized, so it's not gonna last forever. You can store this in the refrigerator for about a week, or you can freeze it for the long term, and it will last a very, very long time. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a taste. This would be so delicious with some bourbon, my favorite cocktail, cider and bourbon. So tasty. If you're using the right mixture of apples, if you have half sweet and half tart apples, you really get a great combination. And going from this to this in a matter of no time, and there you have it, DIY apple cider that you'll be making the entire fall.